enter the stars good morning and what you're going to see next are clips from a series called raised by wolves now this series is right up there at the top of number one series this year and it's all about mother and father androids raising children later on in the series the woman android actually begins to give birth to a child that is half artificial intelligence and android and half human watch the future of humanity is growing inside you and that one's Sol Invictus these remind me of the old tarot cards back on earth used by the devil cults before we purge them quiet are you feeding on him no my fetus is What's wrong with your stomach, mother? Would you like to say hello to number seven? Soon. You had another frozen embryo? No. This is my own fetus. No. Father didn't help. I made it myself. How did you do that? That is beyond my understanding. Hello? Mother. What is this? Come on. Come on. So I'll put that baby inside mother. I can just feel it. And this baby is going to change everything. Now, this is where things get interesting because Raised by Wolves is all about the Looper cult, Looper Kalia. And this will dovetail into the rest of today's show because. Abraham Lincoln was born on Lupercalia, February 13th. Now, the way the story goes is the android used to have white blood as her, you know, basically to power her. And that would be like the milk. And then she starts needing human BLOOD. So there you have exactly what the looper cult used to do during lupercalia they would sacrifice a dog or a goat they would take milk they would mix it with blood they would soak wool in it and that would make the color pink so this android with the copper colored hair which is all part of this as well it's the blue bloods is basically showing us the looper cult the mixing of the two bloodlines through technology and these androids. Let that sink in for a second. The Looper cult in full display. White and red make pink. And this is why Valentine's Day has the pink theme. And that's why it falls on Lupercalia. All of these pagan, ancient pagan practices were syncretized with our reality. And so in essence, they drag us in to their false god worship. Now, today we're going to be examining the Abraham Lincoln $5 matrix and in previous videos, we looked at how Lincoln syncretized with his Penny and Pennywise the Clown, Stephen King's It Clown. And we matched up Lincoln's birth year with the first killings that happened by the It entity in Stephen King's It. All we did was go back, I think it was 20 every 27 years, we went back before the first reported killing and that landed on basically Lincoln was one year old, the one penny president. And there were many, many more connections that we found, but that's the tip of the iceberg for that. But now we're finding this connection to the $5 bill. Now, the newest version of the $5 bill was released in a ceremony on March 13th, 2008. 
And that was the 12 year pre anniversary of Trump's emergency declaration that changed America forever. Friday, the 13th of March, 2020, is when Trump made the announcement at 3.30 p.m. And we get more clues with this educational series of the $5 bill. This was before Lincoln was put on the $5 bill. Here's the image here. And this was in 1896. Now we're going to zoom in on this and break all of this down. And look at some of the elements of this $5 bill from 1896. Again, this is called the Educational Series. And here you'll see that this was basically, let's see here, let's zoom in on this. I want you guys to get a very good image of what is being depicted here. Now, 1896 was a decade after the Statue of Liberty was erected. And the woman holding this light bulb is clearly channeling Lady Liberty. A decade apart, this is what they were depicting and Liberty was originally dedicated and reopened in 2012. That's when it, they reopened it after some construction. Obviously, they were pointing back to the original dedication date of October 28th. What's so important about October 28th? Well... This was the ancient Roman battle at Milvian Bridge that happened 1,500 years earlier on this exact same date. Here it is right here. What happened at this ancient Roman battle? Well, this is the famed battle in which Constantine allegedly won the battle by painting a cross on the shields of his warriors and afterwards instead of giving the glory to Christ guess what he did it's right here in the article and I'll link all this in the pinned comments he allowed the pagans to attribute the victory to soul invictus I want you to see this with your own eyes because this is the missing link to the Statue of Liberty S-O-L and Sol Invictus the very date of the statue's opening October 28th was the pre-anniversary was on the anniversary of this ancient battle in which the pagans gave their praise to Sol Invictus instead of Jesus Christ. Now history rewrites and they try to say that Constantine was this great emperor who was a Christian. But in this act, he already denied Jesus. You can't make this up, you guys. Now, when we look at how the Statue of Liberty came together, you will notice in this article all kinds of references to copper. In fact, copper is mentioned 30 times surrounding the building of the Statue of Liberty. And it was the skin, the skin of the Statue of Liberty, like the copper snake, the copper serpent going all the way back to the Old Testament of the Bible. And now you see how the copper penny and Lincoln tie 
all back to this. Now let's get back to this old $5 bill. Because this will help you understand the true roots of America, which is Mithraism. And that series that we just saw, Raised by Wolves, is all about Mithraism. They say it. That's the religion they worship. And you just heard the little girl say Sol Invictus, which links right into Mithraism. We are the nation of fake Christians. Fake Christianity founded America. We call ourselves Christians, but nothing that we do is what Christ taught. We wage battles out of preemption because we're scared. We take out children in the womb, 58 million since 1973. We worship pagan holidays right out of the church. And it all goes back to Constantine who co-opted Christianity way back then. And under that banner, he basically began a legacy of basically waging battle on all kinds of different peoples and then now here we get down to modern America and it's real easy for the devil to discredit Christianity because he just says look at all the people that died under Christianity see how that works and it's all because the devil already co-opted Christianity a long time ago and this is why you have to be a Christian outside of the religious paradigm now let's keep going with this because I researched this $5 bill in depth. To her right, which is what you're looking at right here. Be prepared to have your mind blown. You might want to be sitting down for this. Is Jupiter, whose father is Saturn. Jupiter is Zeus in the Greek mythology. And Zeus's son is Trump. I mean, Apollo. So, you have Sol Invictus in the middle, represented by Lady Liberty. You've got next to her, Apollo. Or his father, Zeus. Right on the $5 bill. Now, there's more. Next is called fame. And I researched all this. I'm not going to belabor you the, the, you know, reading this from the sources that I got. But this is what it is. And if you have doubts, you go look up this bill yourself. This down here at her feet is called fame. With the trumpet. They call it a trumpet. It's not a horn. They call it a trumpet. Like Trump. And according to the myth, well, the description they give for the bill is that she is delivering sweet music over the map of the United States. Kind of like a Pied Piper, right? Well, who is fame? This is her right here. Theme, fame, there's her trumpet, also known as Asa, the personification of fame and renown, her favor being nobility, notability, her wrath being scandalous rumors. She was the daughter of either Gaia or Elpis, was described as she who initiates and furthers communication and had an altar at Athens. A tremendous gossip. Feme was said to have pried into the affairs of mortals and gods. Then repeated what she learned. Starting off at first with just a dull whisper. But repeating it louder each time until everyone knew. So in effect. She is the goddess of blackmail. After all. How else can you control politicians and America? 
Now, of course, years later, in 1914, Lincoln would grace the $5 bill, but this that we just decoded is very telling because Trump and Pence love to invoke Lincoln. I mean, look at these headlines here about how many times they've invoked Abraham Lincoln just in the past week. This was yesterday. Trump says, I love the black community. He brings up Abraham Lincoln when asked about the Breonna Taylor case. Here's another uh, yesterday, the Hill history professor. Democrats should work around SCOTUS like Abe Lincoln did. And this goes on and on in these debates that happened in 1858. Douglas, there's your 58 again, linked directly into Trump. 58 stories in Trump Tower. The 1958 Western about a man named Trump who was going to build a wall. The 1958, which is when Biff won his millions at 21 years old. The... I think 1858 was when, wasn't that when uh, uh, Baron Trump came out with that book? We also have 58 rooms at Mar-a-Lago. Trump's on 57th Street, which is 5G whiz. The, the 58s are very, very deep in this. So, this is all going on. We had Pence sneaking away to Lincoln's boyhood home Pence is from Indiana which is where Lincoln grew up until he was 21 he was in Indiana these are undeniable connections now after Lincoln's after he passed away right these are the things that were found in his pockets and there was a $5 bill that they found in his pocket, but it wasn't a Union $5 bill. It was a Confederate $5 bill. This is it right here. So Lincoln had a fasc fascination with this bill. Who knows why it was in there? I can tell you why I think it was in there. Because... Even back then, I believe the right-left paradigm was in effect. And these both sides were working together to build America. Creating the division, creating the fighting, creating the sacrifice that would be necessary to forge their new world order. Going all the way back to Lincoln and before. Now, Lincoln talked to the dead. His wife was an occultist. And it, there is at least one example, one known example of a seance that Lincoln attended. His wife held seances regularly right there in the White House. Look at the height of Abraham Lincoln. Trump is 6'3", Lincoln 6'4". I think Trump is the second tallest president under Lincoln. Lincoln was the tallest. They revealed the contents of Lincoln's pockets on Lupercalia, February 12th, 1976. The anniversary of his birthday, obviously. Now, let's keep going with this because it goes even more nuts. Lincoln appears in I Pet Goat 2 as the evil $5 serpentine monitor. And there you can see right there at the edge of his face the number 5 written out in letters. You see the chin line here. The beard line of Lincoln. He's got serpentine skin. And let's get into a little bit closer look at Lincoln. Here are the 
Here's the history of Lincoln and the seances in the White House. I'm not going to belabor this or get into depth about this, but you can, I'll link all of this and you can read it for yourself that he attended one seance and that his wife was regularly holding seances and, and claimed to have had the ability to speak to the dead, which we know as Christians, real Christians, those are demons. So, this begs the question, why are all these presidents keep invoking Lincoln? Now, let's take a look at this iPad Go 2. This is chilling. There's Lady Liberty. Everybody knows the scene. The torch falls off. Directly after this scene comes the child in the egg, looked at by the serpent Lincoln. Now, I'm sorry I'm getting excited about this because, but this is, this is crazy, you guys. I want you to let this sink in. These look like the National Monument. The Washington Monument, the obelisks as his fingers. And there is the serpent seed right there. You have Lincoln staring right there with the reptilian skin looking at what is actually been identified. We identified this on this channel as the method by which they make VCs. Right there, there's a cord attached like a serpentine snake backlighting the embryo of the egg. Here are some more images of it here. This is how it's done. It's actually influenza manufactured, the VC for influenza. We discovered this like about five, six months ago. And there you see Lincoln staring into what basically is the VC. This is it. It's happening right now. There's Anubis. We saw that in Gaga's video. I'm just scrolling through here. Later, the serpent Lincoln makes a return. He comes back. Here he is here. I've got this in slow motion. Remember, it says five on the beard. The gaunt face standing above the sickened VC child. All of this just after the Liberty scene. See the child on the floor with the chicken egg shell head can't make this up look at the TV so let's put all this together what's happening in the scene who likes to see himself on TV who's trying to give every American man woman and child a VC who loves money that would be Trump So, was Lincoln the serpent seed? Well, we know he was a giant. We know he's depicted as a giant in the Lincoln Memorial. We know that he devised what is called the Anaconda plan to crush the South. And in the drawings of the period, there's a giant snake or serpent wrapped around the South. Did you know that Lincoln was a wrestler? I didn't know that. He was a famous wrestler before he became president. So, based on what I've shown you, it appears as though 
all these presidents who invoke Lincoln and claim to be Christians are liars. As are all politicians. And this begs the question, do we really need presidents and governors? Was Trump appointed by God? This is the single most prolific question I get on this channel. People believe that Trump was appointed by God. What I'm going to demonstrate to you right now is how the biblical passages have been manipulated and misrepresented so that the powers that be can maintain control over humanity. How do I know this? Because the Bible does not contradict itself. Hosea 8.4 They have set up kings, but not by me. They have appointed princes, but I did not know it. With their silver and gold, they have made idols for themselves. That they might be cut off. Uh, that bill that we looked at? That's called a silver backer. Silver. It represented the value of silver. They have made for themselves silver and gold, and they will be cut off. Our entire economy is based off of silver and gold. This is what I've been trying to get you guys to understand. All these channels, these quote unquote Christian channels telling you to buy silver and gold, run away. And look what God told the very first kings in the Bible. This is very telling. Because they begged. The Israelites begged God. It's interesting how, how this site basically tries to make it look like a positive. But look, let's read. In 1 Samuel 8. An amazing event is described that illustrates how God establishes or appoints rulers over nations. No, he didn't. He warned against it. But let's keep reading. This is how you have to read between the lines. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and regard all that I say to you. For they have not rejected you, but, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Does that sound like God is pleased with people having a king? God allowed Israel to have their own king. Yes, he allowed it. Verses 10 through 18 record what God told Samuel to communicate to Israel that they would experience with their new king. The entire description is negative. And in verse 18 we read this, Then you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. How can this site say that God appointed the king when in this verse he's saying that he's not going to listen to you? That makes absolutely no sense. This is why you have to put on your own critical thinking cap. The message to Israel was simple. They should be allowed to select their ruler but it was not the ruler God wanted for them. So how did he appoint the person then? The ruler would be an evil one who would oppress them. Yet God would appoint him and establish his throne. But he would not be God's choice. Now, that brings us to the verse in Romans, which all of the governments like to use to establish their authority over all of us. This passage was not talking about secular governments. It was talking about the church hierarchy. And the second that a person in leadership who is claiming to be a Christian whose actions are polar opposite and diametrically opposed to what Christ taught they lose their authority. And if you interpret Romans 13 that way, then the rest of these biblical passages do not contradict each other. 
But if you try to pull Romans out by itself and give authority to governments, then you're basically admitting that the Bible contradicts itself. And it doesn't, ever. And this is where biblical interpretations, they fail to take the rest of the Bible into account. You need the three witnesses. Here we have it. The three witnesses would be Hosea and Samuel. Both warning against man choosing their own kings. Why are we in such denial? Because we love our wrestlers. We love our fake politics. We want it. And there's going to come a time where God will close his ears to all of us and will no longer listen. Now, I hope this got through to some people today. Because this is a very important message. Those people that keep saying that God has appointed Trump, you are wrong. You're just wrong. God would not have us following a man that every day isn't praying for the children in this country that don't even make it out of the womb. That's just one example. And all of the oppression that we go through, the taxation, the rules, the laws, the unfair laws, all of our freedoms are being taken away every single day. This gold and silver based economy that God warns about over and over again. When will we wake up? I'm very sad to say that I don't think we ever will. The Bible says we won't. All we're doing here is waking up as many people as we can. That's the reason for this channel. Just to, there may be a few more that wake up, but most people will be deceived. We don't need a governor or a president. And neither did ancient Israel. I'm not talking about modern Israel. When, I, when I'm speaking of Israel, I'm talking about ancient Israel, which are two completely different peoples all this tweet power how about every single day you wake up speak out against what's happening in this country in terms of children not even making it out of the womb how about that if I had the voice that he has and the people listening that's what I'd be doing every single morning let us pray for the 58 million who never made it out of the womb. All right. I love each and every one of you. I'm going to end the show here. We'll be back on here. I may upload montages over the weekend. Appreciate all of you that downloaded the Brave Browser. I made a mistake on that because I guess that uh, you can download it on your phone, your mobile phone, and it does help you many many ways so if you're on a mobile and you weren't going to do it because you're on a mobile please do that over the weekend or now after the show and we will end the show at that point i love each and every one of you take care and be safe you guys